He is complex, hard as shit on YouTube. This is part two of the No Jumper podcast. If you ain't watched part one, what are you doing? It's right here. Go ahead and watch it right now. All this right here. Don't worry about it right now. Y'all gonna find out more about it later. All right, I'm acting like I didn't just take two days to finish this podcast. Like, I wouldn't have gotten through this day. I wouldn't have gotten through this year. I wouldn't have gotten through this. I wouldn't we used have to fear that. that, like, oh, shit, what if, like, somebody actually does kill themselves listening to our music? But we've actually gotten a lot of the exact opposite reaction. Right. People saying, like, yo, dude, my mom died last week, and y'all dropped that It's like, damn, and, like, I'm not alone. Right. Yeah. 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 And that's a good thing, too, is that there's, you know, at least, like, 40 years worth of uh, musicians addicted to heroin making right. music. That uh, yeah. You know, there's, there's plenty of other dudes out there that they could look up to as well. I mean, and there's, there's really no emotion in rap. And that's something and then, that we yeah. try to provide is because like, hey, at the end of the day, even though you think you're a superstar, we're all fucking human, man. You do feel sad sometimes. Like you do feel angry yeah, sometimes. Absolutely. Like, well, well, it's, it's actually crazy. Like people forget half the time that these celebrities are humans. You know what I'm saying? Like, and they start going crazy over these celebrities and shit like that. And I just, I don't understand. I can do it. Since this is an underlying theme is that with like Future, he's human. a huge mainstream rapper that talks a lot about doing pills and stuff. But I don't think a lot of people catch on to that but, though. No, no, uh, I think they no, do. Some of it. No, mainstream wise. I think they do. And I think that's why Future has just like, remember how Lil Wayne was just popping when he was flooding and he was on right. drugs and shit like that. I think that's why even though Future's on this mainstream level right now, he's talking about that shit where like, you know, uh, I, I'm not going to give up the dirty for you. Yeah. You know, like I've been in that situation. Like when he says shit like that in the song, I'll get chills to where right. I've told a girl, like, I'm not giving this up for you. So, yeah, I think, you know, I, along with his catchy ass song. <laughs> yeah, right? I was. I mean, but I think people do catch those lines and, and, and relate to them, I you think know, on do, a subconscious level. I meant more of like radio listeners I don't think they're just listening mm. to it his big beat. hits usually aren't the ones that are directly referencing drugs but then again the album is called Dirty Sprite like, right, I mean, right. but, but at the same time like it's weird because Lean is not looked down upon that much whereas it's like very similar chemically to doing heroin or to doing Zans and There's, all this shit it's, it's a very it's, it's very as far as like on the scale Let's say heroin's up here. Yeah, because you tell me. You know, I fucked around a little bit with lean and popping yeah, pills, sure. but I don't really know. I'm a it. pharmacist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he is. Heroin's up here. Lean's right here. Because you're talking codeine in it. Okay. You know? Codeine's not that strong. I mean, for it fuck's can, sake, it, get, yeah. you, it comes in Tylenol 3. Right. You know? So, I mean, and then on top of that, you got permethazine in there, which is, you know, Finnegan. It's like some stomach medicine, but it, it'll have, it has that hydrochloride, that Benadryl and all that. NyQuil uh -huh. has in it that makes you sleepy, you know? So, yeah, it's not, it's, it's, it's not that what bad. Is it not I mean, as far as like. It can get bad. It's different. Yeah, right? yeah. It it can, can, I mean, they've had, you know, people that die off that shit. Mm -hmm. but. I got to a point when I was sipping where I didn't want to sip lean anymore. I just wanted to sip straight hydrocodone. Right. Which is, uh, fucking which shout is out like, hydrocodone. Yeah, which is like <laughs> sipping, you know, straight narco pills or, right. you know, Lord type shit like Let's that. talk about the Zans because that's like the trendiest drug these days. Right. And everybody who's ever uh, done one knows exactly Zans. why they're so scary. Fuck yeah. Zans. Oh, get out of here. Zans. Why do you say that? I don't like Zans. You just have you tried it and you yeah. hate it? or you just... I just don't like it. I don't get it. He likes it every night. He recreates. I mean, Again, look, if I, got, if I got nothing else, I'll, I'll pop a Zan, but like, I just, I'm not going to be itching for Zans. I can keep you the fucking Zans. I'm See, good. me on the other hand, I'm, I have bad anxiety. Right. Yeah, he so actually needs the Zans. So I do have, you feel like you don't have anxiety in the same way? No, I don't. No. Are you more attracted to like Adderall or something that's I like upper? I technically have ADHD. I take Vivans and shit. It's all fun of games. So your brain loses that stimulation after being off of it for a little bit. Next thing you know, your anxiety is okay, like 10 yeah. times worse. See, I love that shit too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You just like everything? Especially mixing them. Yeah. Yeah. But I oh, mean, the mix. I, one time, yeah, that's fucking. Once you're doing the Adderall and the Zans together and shit, and you're just flying, oh, I've and done it's it just, so much. Oh my god, that's scary. I probably did that once or twice, and it's just Adderall and drinking is pretty crazy. Zans, pretty really? much, yeah, because you don't like get tired of that drinking. That sounds crazy. Well, it's the same right. thing as drinking on coke. It's <laughs> no, see, yeah, yeah, like just is, snorting is, yeah. coke and then drinking and snorting coke is a different ball game. Right, right. But it's crazy because drinking and snorting coke is like every fucking person in LA all the time. That, that's just so standard, normal right. combination that it's almost like you. Forget that, like you put them together. I forget what the fucking drug that is formed when they come together, but it is way more powerful than doing either one on their own. Right, right, right. you know that, right? Yeah, that, like it turns into a different chemical together yeah. in your brain once you combine alcohol that, yeah. and cocaine. Yeah, it's crazy. What man. would you say to like some sixteen-year-old kid out there who probably like sees a lot of people as friends and shit doing Xanax and doing I've, this kind of stuff? I've actually with, told them before, like stay away from that. Yeah, shit. Yeah, same here. Smoke weed. Smoke weed every day. Yeah, same <laughs> here. Like I, I've told them that too. I'm not prescri I'm not prescribed Xans. But when I can get them, you know, I get them. Uh -huh. I try to keep myself at a safe point to where I don't get hooked on them, you know. He knows when he's like, 
if he second Zans three days in a row, he'll chill out for three right, days. Right, right, right. Like, but um, you know, at at the same rate, man, I, I, it, it, it's hard. It's hard to tell these kids. You know, if you're doing Zans, it's like a trend and shit like that's that. Stupid. I mean, come on, yeah. yeah. But I mean, I understand the yeah. ones that hit me up and and they feel like they're coming out of their skin or they can't go out in public or they're just that's a different story. You know, that's, a, yeah. that's a medical condition. It's a right. way different. Story. You should, so you should go see a doctor. You should fucking, right. you should work on your mind mentally. Like that's honestly you for should me, go see a doctor. Absolutely. Right. Or you should like like honestly for me like sometimes I'll get that urge like I feel like I want to fucking pop a pill or do something but instead I'll go fucking run around the block I'll right. exercise I'll go. fucking dude. like get gotta put the energy into something else get a really good night's I sleep actually, dude that's something a great like thing that, you know? that's a great thing that you do man yeah I would ride my bike like for about maybe an hour and a half and when I get home like 30 minutes later it feels, feels like, like he's on a pain Norco, pill. exactly that, that exhaustion like kids what? did you hear that exercise makes you feel like you're on fucking it Norco. does it's, yeah. al- it's almost like the same thing it's well, a similar feeling it's the endorphins what I've like, learned in rehab is yeah it's the same thing it's the natural way your body is supposed to release those like oh damn I feel good chemicals exactly it's and, through food mm-hmm. sex and exercise and once you start to replace that with something Synthetic. that automatically gives it to you, with no work, that's when no your effort, frontal yeah. lobe, you know, stops producing those things, and 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 you know, drugs and alcohol, drugs and alcohol, just completely take over your frontal yeah. lobe. And that's the crazy thing, you know, is that it's like everybody fucking feels anxiety. Everybody feels awkward in public. At some like point, at a certain yeah. point, like, mine's on a different. Mine's right. like panic attack. Mm-hmm. I feel like I need to go to the hospital because I'm having a heart. No, attack. No, we've been in like in crowds shit, to where like he'd be like, so. hey, got this, and like he would like just bounce real quick because like he needed to get away. Yeah, yeah I mean that's. That's the level I'm at with it. But that's like one thing that a lot of young kids might not understand necessarily is that even if you're fucking cool as hell, even if you've been to a million different parties, bars when you're older and everything like that, that feeling of like not feeling right when you're in public, that is just every fucking human being has that to a certain extent. And if you don't have that at all, then you're really fucking lucky. You should probably be a fucking movie star or something. No, no, true shit. That's true shit. Absolutely. All right, let's let's change the topic. I was going to say at certain points where I was like, fuck it, bro. I don't give a damn about what nobody thinks, uh, man. Everybody wants to know what your religious beliefs it's are. It's a long so time to get to this point, religion though. For a little bit. <laughs> All right, God, I'll let you go first. God is dead. <laughs> yeah. Well, God was never alive, so he probably ain't no, dead. But you, <laughs> no, uh, so you know, I've this? always, the, I used to be like, we were. That's some Friedrich Nietzsche shit right there. I was raised religious, I guess. Uh-huh. Uh, and then when I started listening to like Joking Victim and shit, that's when I started like questioning stuff. And I remember like some high school teacher cause was telling me like, don't ever read something and take it for what it is. Like, look at the time it was written. Look at where it was written. Mm. All that kind of shit. Who wrote mm. it? Like, mm. look at all that kind of stuff and question what it is. Yeah, at least he has someone in his life to tell him that. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> a lot of these people just believe whatever the hell they see. Right, what it is. Whether it's the Bible, the newspaper, Don't ever everything. Question Doing their own research. Everything. Everything. So after that, I started, like, really, like, I would, like, sit in my room and just, like, read these fucking books about, like, uh, you know, conspiracy theories. I read like Culture of Make Believe and Behold the Pale Horse and all this shit. And I got super into that shit at a young age, which was kind of uncomfortable. Uh, so that was, I was, I was wondering because I wasn't I was like, sure so- whenever, uh, whenever I heard that song, Behold a Pale Horse, I was wondering if there was something behind that. In my room, and just, like read these fucking books about like, uh, you know, conspiracy theories. I read like Culture of Make Believe and Behold the Pale Horse and all this shit. And I got super into that shit at a young age, which was kind of uncomfortable for my parents, but they've accepted it now. But mm. I don't believe in God. I don't. Uh, we use the devil as a representation of exactly. fuck organized religion, and I'll we also use the devil as a representation of money. Right. To where, okay. Yeah. To where like we're not we talking say, about literal devil. When we say we say sell our souls to the to the devil, we're talking about how you need money in this world to survive, right. and we're selling our souls to just to get this fucking money and right. survive. Selling your time, is. selling yeah. your life, so correctly. Life, yeah. Yeah. Yo, because that at the end of the day, like there's rational inquiry and like wanting to find out the truth, and then there's belief, and religion's all about belief. Religion. Right. Hey, not nice thought. <laughs> yeah. They say they use a Satan as a representation of fuck religion. <laughs> not Ramirez. He meant every word of it. This is what it is. And if you have any doubts it's about this, your it's doubts faith. are wrong. It's yeah, faith. Right. And faith right. is the enemy. Faith is the worst the thing in that? the world. What because the fuck is that? You know, faith is just believing something without evidence, and believing something without evidence is always going to be the dumbest thing that now, you look, fucking do. I agree with the whole faith bullshit. It, um, okay, I, I agree with faith. All right, say your mom has cancer and she's dying. Right. I think that you should have faith that she's going to live again with the positive shit and putting positive thoughts into the universe. That can work. But having faith in something that somebody tells you is there, and if you don't do this, this is going to happen in hell and heaven and sins. That's all bullshit. Especially because we're not talking about oh, like I have faith that there's a God out there and that there's somebody who cares about the world or whatever. 
like that doesn't offend me because that if you need that to get through your fucking day fine i agree with but you when you start completely. talking about oh i believe in this two thousand year old book and jesus is going to come back right. from the dead and all this bullshit it's like use your fucking head look <laughs> into it like you know, try to find out I really, something you know i get mind boggled about how people can just like, how can you be that fucking dumb? I don't Especially get it. Especially in this generation. <laughs> in this exactly. Time. When you have no, the fucking bro, internet, man, internet, bro. Exactly. That's exactly what I was thinking, man. Like, we've, we're more networked than we've ever been. There's so, like, all the information is just so easily accessible. Like, how do you right. still believe there, in this shit? That's what we was talking about. What? Like, last I week, hate to say it, but, like, uh, goddamn. You know? about how do they know what he said when they wasn't around? Exactly. Did it. And and the religion the, the Bible's not even claiming that this book was necessarily written by God. Like if this is if that exactly. book with all this bullshit about how you can kill your slaves and stoning well, people to death and all this bullshit, if that is the book that God came up with, right. that he instructed people to write. And there's people something really that. wrong with God. He's <laughs> say this. Look at the look at the the Old Testament versus the New Testament. It's two different. And it, it pisses oh, yeah. me off that they try to wipe that Old Testament slate clean just by yeah. saying, "Oh, oh but Jesus. look at the New Testament." Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? No, the Old Testament straight up says, "Like, look at Sodom and Gomorrah." Like. Right. It's okay for God to fucking just slay a whole fucking population. That's genocide, dude. Yeah. Right. You're preaching genocide. Right. So, of course, you have motherfuckers to this day that agree with that right. because they're raised on this bullshit. And religion is dangerous because we see it all the time with this ISIS shit. We dude. see it all the time with the dude shooting up the Planned Parenthood. That's like I think religious beliefs like really are dangerous so. when people believe them and actually put them into effect. Yeah. I think yeah. like really like 99% of the world's problems are because of organized religion. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Because absolutely. Of, you look throughout history. Mm -hmm. Oh, throughout the beginning of time. But have you I ever was, seen, have you seen, I'm sorry to cut you off, but you ever seen the movie Zeitgeist? I have. I saw it back in the day. I need to rewatch it. You should rewatch yeah. it because they talk about the first segment. I haven't segment watched it either yet. I've been is, to watch you, it that's so one bad. of my favorite movies. The first segment that's is about how uh, even before Jesus, they had you know messiahs and Jesus type figures, and even Noah and Moses. They had these type of figures through all all sorts of cultures that you haven't even heard of. You right. know what I mean? Or right. So, but, yeah. All right. So I'm, I'm gonna pause it before they keep going. Like the only thing I wanted to say is it would be. <laughs> You got to think about the trade-offs, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, there are a lot of problems just because there is religion and shit like that. But imagine a world without religion. You know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Like, there's so many religions low be, that low have the same exact, worse. like uh, uh, a virgin, mm -hmm. a virgin mother, right. a savior. Exactly. And what the thing is, what they're trying to say is, Jesus was not a person. What Jesus was was a representation of the sun, literally mm -hmm. the sun in mm -hmm. the sky, mm -hmm. light, life. Like you can see, you can hunt, you can do everything. And that was what that was supposed to be. And nighttime was supposed to be darkness. Like you can't see. It's scary. Like you need to like put a fire to survive and like mm -hmm. uh, cover because you think about how scary it must have been to exist as a fucking caveman exactly. two thousand years oh. ago. <laughs> you needed religion because you didn't have google to rely on to figure right. out how the world worked right. you see a fucking rainstorm coming and you're like what, what is the that fuck is that right. it's just, you know, right. here's you the thing. No way to make and sense I, of it i'm not trying to down the south but uh religion's like, very different just like I'm Audi, i was i was raised from you know the typical louisiana conservative right wing like everybody Christian in the values. world is catholic it's a catholic you know and and let's be honest here the south is is kind of behind on everything you know what i'm saying i mean it's just uh, they're the last in, in health and education. Uh, education. I mean, a lot of things that matter, you the know. Highest unemployment. And, uh, you know, I think a, a part of them being so into religion, it's a lot of backwoods out there, and they don't have this access to it's information. It's an easy answer. It's right. an easy answer. Right. They don't have this access to information. Nor you know? do they want to access the information. No, though. and that's true, too. Nor do they want to access that information. But, I mean... The South, the South is crazy, man. Yeah. It's 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 crazy. Like you feel that? Do you feel like it's a lot more low key when you come out to LA and shit? Uh, oh man! When we come to LA, like it's what? kind of weird because, because I'm not. You can smoke weed on the street. You no, can, that's you know. fucking. Like, how smoking weed is in LA is how drinking alcohol is in New Orleans. Really? You right. Can, you can. Right, right. I can walk around with a fucking bottle of Jack Daniels like a handle, and nobody will give me shit. I can right. go to a playground and do that shit. But you, you got a weed Yeah, do you be an alcoholic in I've been the arrested south twice of Louisiana and, and you're okay, you know what I'm saying? But you smoke weed, oh my God. I got arrested junkie. twice for like two grams right. and I was facing five years in jail. And That's any rational crazy. fucking human being could understand that weed's a lot safer than alcohol. So it, it pisses me off that like when, you're, when you are somewhere where drinking's not a big deal and weed is fucking public enemy number one. Right. This doesn't make sense. Let's talk right. about cigarettes. Oh yeah, and even there, yeah. Like, cigarettes are cool. Like Andre 3000 said, marijuana's illegal but cigarettes are cool. I mean yeah. like Louisiana, correct me if I'm wrong, Number one incarceration it is. place it, in the world. In the right? world. Yeah. In the world. I mean, but, yeah. And you know what's crazy though is uh, back to the religion thing. It's just that like, like I got a fucking devil head tattoo on my hand. I got a burning church tattoo on my arm. It's symbols that are, are anti. Let me see the burning church. Yeah, yeah. Symbols that are anti-religious are like. 
I got I got this when yeah, I moved yeah, down yeah. to Pensacola, Florida. Shout out to the South for a little while. That's but fire. but yo, like the whole thing about it is that like anti religious imagery is attractive to me because I saw as a kid how evil and how wrong religion was, you know? So it's like to me, like uh, the symbols of Satanism or whatever, it's, I'm not a Satanist. That's we're on the same page. I fucking that's the whole. I like those voice, images so. because those are represent the destruction of ignorance exactly. and the and the propagation of fucking intelligent inquiry into what the exactly. world is. You Absolutely. know, that's what matters. Absolutely, yeah, that's, you, you hit the nail on the head. Have you guys ever gotten shit for that though? Because hip hop is traditionally kind of religious. Like, uh, I mean, yeah, hip hop is so stupid for that. <laughs> They be talking about, oh, praise God, glory to God, stuff like that. And they turn around and just like commit all of 10 sounds. People white, I feel like people are like, oh, they're <laughs> they just crazy more, white yeah. boys. Yeah. And you're not yeah, like yeah, mainstream. Yeah, yeah. And all like seven sounds, whatever. Yeah, we're still, yeah, we're Kid still. Kid Ink or something. Yeah, yeah, right, right. I mean, <laughs> yeah. we're still. Break like, all 10 commandments. Yeah. If you were on tour with Kid Ink, you might not want you saying We that. got an email <laughs> today. Uh, at, coincidentally, we got an email today. Like I said, we mostly get support, but we got one today talking about like, um, are you guys serious with I believe this person's sibling was a big fan of ours and I'm not sure if this is true I, I hope it's he not he didn't say what had happened right he didn't say so I don't know if it was a joke or what but uh, you know talking about like um, basically making it sound like they they killed, they themselves. killed themselves and it was he because didn't of our say music that. Let me see real quick. Well, because I want to get this story straight before I, I say something. Because like if it. SoundCloud could make you take your own life, then maybe something else would have done it as okay. well. Yeah, I think so too. I'm not trying to sound crazy, point fingers or anything. I just feel the need to let you guys know that your music is greatly influential. My brother Jared loved you guys to death. He would listen to your music on repeat along with a few other bands, but like his last his last week of his life was 90% of your albums. And I don't really want to sound like a crazy conservative nut or anything. I'm just deeply heartbroken. And they quoted one of his lyrics saying, so I cut my fucking wrist, feel like a puddle of piss, suicide, death of me, who gives a fuck, no one. And then they said, it is insanity, pure insanity. This world is already insane. Why feed into it? Why feed yourself a bunch of bad drugs and glorify it and to push and cheer for the end? I simply do not understand. He's you may as well smoke crack. I just want you to know you guys won. You have succeeded. At least my brother found uh, comfort in your songs. Well, right. I agree with the last sons. Uh, yeah, At least I mean, he found comfort in your songs. Oh, no, they kept going. Homie's missing, homie's missing the, the point of what we're trying to do here. I mean, my first impression for what he's even reading right now is kind of what I was talking about in the um, in that previous video, that, that liver video, man. Like, not everybody's going to find comfort. There's, always, there's inevitably going to be people who sink deeper into the mentality. We're not you know? trying to say, like, the world is a fucked up place and let's all make it even more fucked up. Mm -hmm. We're all saying the world is a fucked like up that. place and this is how it makes me feel. Right. And this is what I've gone through. And, like, what, what could you possibly contribute to art or to music besides your own experience? Like, right. rap is full of people who are not speaking from their own experience and right. are talking a bunch of bullshit. Right. I mean, I understand what he's saying is that he feels like maybe you guys make it seem glamorous or whatever. But, at, 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 I mean, and that's up to you at, at a certain point to try to figure out how you want to express it and everything like that, you know? Yeah, I... I I, I don't know, man, because it's like I, I you know, I guess people ain't or aren't reading through the lines and yeah, like see I mean, the symbolism. I mean, because it's it's yeah, it's depressing songs, but I mean, some of people will hear what they want to hear. You know what I'm saying? Not everybody's gonna be listening to the music for the lyrical content. They'll be listening for the vibes. You know what I'm saying? For may have an all sorts of different things. Right. Like, you know I think what I'm in saying? a way they it's all have an uplifting. And it's not your that. responsibility to spell every single thing out in every single no, song. Not at all. You right? know? Not at all, man. Yeah. So I mean, uh, you know, I but, think a big part of art is is pushing the boundaries. And, exactly. Uh, yep. And I think that's why we we don't. If I'll say a line I and I'll ask said him, it better. Yeah. I'll ask him like, "Hey, is this too fucked up? Like, should I not say this?" And he'll be like, "No, dude, say it." Like, right. We'll like we'll see what happens. If so. you look at like all the great musicians throughout time, I mean, they all push boundaries to a certain extent because otherwise you're just doing what everybody else is doing and that's boring. Look at, absolutely. Look at Elvis, and I don't. I fucking like, hate Elvis. Exactly. But, like, though, yeah. Look at Elvis, like just because of him shaking his hips, like everybody was like, "This is the devil's music," like all because. Because it was in a way promoting sex when really it's just dancing. Like, right, right, right. Stupid. Or even somebody like fucking. It's the like, mob mentality. Like exactly. everybody gets the same. And they want something to blame it on. Yeah, no. exactly. Scapegoats. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. They want something nice and simple for them to make sense of it from. You know. Right. Damn, that's fucking crazy that that guy wrote that article. I wonder if we're gonna find or that email. That was literally yeah, today, man. That's I wonder if we're gonna today. find out some crazy shit about that. I hope not. Like, I hope everything's okay because, like, that's yeah, not I really what we want to happen. Yeah, like, not at all, man. Because you know what? And I'm not saying this like in a fucked up way, but like, 
if somebody kills themselves because of our music, that's one less listener. And I'm not looking at his numbers. I'm looking at it as like, I want people to listen to my music right. and enjoy it. And if somebody kills himself, why would I want that to happen? Why would I want my fan base to kill themselves? Like, then I'm, I'm expressing myself to fucking nobody. Exactly. Like, it's stupid. Right. I think why, well, man, this, this this interview, you know, will be great to shed light on. Exactly. Because yeah. yeah. people have been asking us a lot of questions. I didn't want to answer them. I was going to let you ask them. Yeah, so. yeah, absolutely. That's man. good. Hey, absolutely. What, what is your life like on tour? You guys like being on tour a lot or what? I'm used to the tour life because of the punk shit. Uh-huh. Uh, but is rap tour a little bit better than the punk tour? It's tours? the same fucking thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a couple more bitches come up to me at the end of the night, but yeah. that's about it. Like, It's rough, man. I mean, it's, you know, you you're driving, mm-hmm. let's say eight, nine like hours eight, nine, yeah. out the day to get where you're going. And I mean, and as soon as you bus, pull right? up, it's a shitty little car. I mean, or something, we're in right? a fucking van. Yeah, you know okay. what I'm saying? You Seven pull people up, crammed in a van. You you know you do your performance. You, you hop out. You go to the hotel. You get a couple hours of sleep and you do like it. Like literally, over. Albuquerque. We drove twelve hours and right as soon as we parked the van at the venue, we walked in, walked on stage, did the show. Afterwards, hung out with the fans, and they're all like, "Where's the after party?" And I'm like, dude, we don't like. We're I'm about going to go to home fucking and go to bed. Sleep, yeah, man. I'm a grandpa, man. Like he goes to bed at like nine o'clock. Yeah, at night. yeah, yeah. And I'm a homebody, <laughs> so you know the tour. It's been a the great experience, there. you know. But you know, at the end of the day, I, I am a homebody, and you know, I, I do miss. I miss being. There. I'm a little more social than him. I'm still a bit antisocial. I only fuck with people that like I really know. You know, what I'm saying, I'm like that I can like trust and. But when them. you're on tour, do you take that as like an opportunity to to? party and to try to take advantage of all the chicks that are trying to talk to you or uh, anything not, like actually, that? Actually, not, really? not at all, not man. yet, at least. Shit. No, it's no. not so, like that's so I, I much him. Him he more would, than him. He would. Definitely I don't, more than him. I'm th- I don't, they're saying that Jay Green takes advantage. <laughs> Jay Green's got the most pussy on the <laughs> tour, that's for sure. Is that just because he's black and you guys are white? So that's it's like, exactly what yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, Jay Green just, uh, he knows how to finesse it, dude. I feel like I Germ is probably care, soaked man. in pus right I don't, now. I don't put the energy Germ's in. a savage. I heard Germ's a fucking savage. I heard, Germ I heard he's a savage fucking too. scumbag, actually. <laughs> scumbag how? <laughs> uh, that's what Chris told me. <laughs> he's <laughs> like, like oh. <laughs> It is what it is, dude. <laughs> no, the way he is with drugs is kind of like the way I am with bitches, to be honest with you. Yeah, right. man. Yeah. Honestly, I just, I, it's too much energy, dude. Like, I don't He doesn't give a fuck, fuck but I, I don't I care do. about, like, going chase after you, girl. And dude, yeah, like, I ain't chasing like, sure, If you came up to me yeah. and you say, hey, I want to come back to the hotel with y'all, I want to have sex, and then I want to roll. Cool, we'll do it. But other than that, man, I'm not going. That's what we're man. all trying to orchestrate. You know what I'm, I'm, yeah, just, right. I'm <laughs> just, I'm just, I don't, I don't care about it right now. You know what I'm saying? The pussy is just, and and women are just not in my vision right now, man. I I, I don't see it. I don't. That's care why it's for awesome it. for me. Just send them yeah, all my send them way. Them. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, <laughs> pussy addiction is a real thing, though. Uh, like uh, hollow. Yeah, I've been honestly, it, man. The, the past couple of years has made me realize like how addicted no, I really I know, am to that shit and how. You know, because like I was just on vacation with my parents for a week. And now I was fucking hitting Tinder a little bit, trying to fucking figure. Now he's a cook. You're something out, but at the same time, like it didn't really, it didn't really work out to the last. It's always the same thing when you're on fucking tour or whatever. You always are on t- Tinder trying to fucking figure something out, and it always they just come rushing in at the last fucking minute. So I, you know, that's like eight days without it, and I'm sitting there on the couch just thinking like, yo, I'm a fucking addict. Like, yeah. This shit is in my fucking brain right now. Like, you know, real I've shit, been, man. It'll take over just like drugs. You know what I'm saying? I've I mean, been gotten used to the whole one night stand. But yet I'm still like into like the whole like wanting and dining, making nah, love. One, and one shit. night stands fun. Don't worry. No, no, I'm getting, <laughs> used, I'm getting used to it. I'm getting used to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People want to know what's up with uh, the tattoos. People want to know what the secret meanings are. They think that there's something up with Wait, them. Which tattoos? Is, I don't. I'm assuming his. I, got, I, mean, I, got, more, I can't even tell what Scram's tattoos are. <laughs> <laughs> one question about one of my tattoos, but that's all I've heard. I've I've been getting tattoos since I was 16. Mm-hmm. So like, by the time I was 21 i was covered. i was pretty much covered from my shoulders down to my feet i'm probably about to start getting my neck and face done next but mm-hmm. i mean what's there, the, there's the general really no, theme there's no i mean there's really no theme man it, it was just like i got g59 tattooed on my wrist you know i got and my, what's g59 stand for gray five nine gray five nine okay and it it was just like it, 10 years ago um you know it's me and the homies, like a couple big homies of mine, they got this Highway 59, and it was everybody like, everybody east of Highway 59, east and south of Highway 59, you uh-huh. know, it was like this great five nine click, and it just, it turned into something, but like on some street shit at first, you know? We just developed into our own thing. Yeah, and we just like kind of took it, and one of my one of my big homies is serving a pretty long time, you know, for, for some what? shit he did. I, I can't. Yeah, but murder. I, I mm. can't. Really, right, let's not I talk about really it. <laughs> but 
uh, you know, we just we kind of took it and, and ran it with the music shit, man. Right. And we adapted the whole gray part. Well, the gray thing I think initially was uh, black and white. It doesn't matter, you uh-huh. know. We've come together, we're all gray. But gray kind of evolved into like this whole like, uh, I guess, depressing tone too, as yeah, well. Yeah, you yeah. know, like gray is neither because gray is kind of like a contextual thing. It's it's never like this is wrong, this is right. It right. always depends on the context. That's the representation right. of things not being black and white. Right, yeah, right. yeah. Speaking of black and white, uh, quite a few people asked, what's up with you guys saying the N-word? We don't say the N-word. We don't say I it. I don't say it. I've never yeah. said it. Yeah. When yeah. I saw that, I was just like, you oh, I guess what? they do. Look, well, they had this, never, one track, this one track a long time ago called Sick. Uh, it was like before Suicide Boys. One of the guys that we rapped with who was a black dude said the word in the beginning of the song. So that could be what they're referencing. They might have thought it was We've you. We've never said it. Yeah, oh. never, never, never. That's why you said I was so cooked. <laughs> when I was listening to the first uh, Kill Yourself Stoggers, <laughs> and they had that little sample come on. <laughs> I was like, hold on, man. Why, why is that? Why would you describe <laughs> what is why this? Besides the fact that you know, essentially no other white people say it in music right, because right. it's weird. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> is that... Well, uh, Stitches says it. I don't know. Like Stitches if, is in his own fucking world. Yeah, That's true. Agree, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think is that's that what, what it is. Yeah, that's what I it thought is? he got okay. the pass because he was. He some thinks other I should ethnic. get the pass because it just wasn't mixed. It doesn't apply. Like, yeah, if you look. I mean, but white, isn't is it Nick? What does Nick say to Am I? No, right? He'll say it in Miami. You know. <laughs> <laughs> A lot yeah. of people are like a little bit Hispanic and they, they got the pass. But, right, right. but then you kind of look at them and you're like, really? Like, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of weird. I mean, it, it, I, just where I grew up and shit, you know, it's, it's a respect thing, you know? Exactly. Of course, yeah, I had yeah. my yeah. friends where I, you know, I could they say said, it. Hey, we don't care if you say it, but I still, it's kind of uncomfortable. Believe me, no. I, they had my friends where I could say it and I did say it. I mean, they were my, they were my fucking homies, man. Like, exactly, I grew up yeah, with yeah. these fools. But... You know what I'm saying? I do res- I do respect it. You know what I'm saying? And I it's I, I would I would never cross that line. Yeah. Based on the like where that word even comes from in the first place, you know what I'm saying? It doesn't matter what the suffix is. Hell, it doesn't even matter if you put something in front of it, like it's still the same word, and that's what a lot of people get misconstrued, like G G A or G G E R, it don't matter, it's the same word. <laughs> so the real solution would just be like nobody use it at all. I know I've used it a couple of times, like doing these videos and stuff. I use it very sparingly, but I do try not to use it. Never yeah. with music or in public talking to germ, like just bullshit. It's just a line you don't, you know. So it's like, right, me, message, wrong like message, wrong message, I get it. But. So even though if I'm like sitting around like you know, my friends or whatever, like they wouldn't care if I said it, but am I going to say it around your grandma? No. Because right, I right, feel like right, a right. fucking asshole. Actually, and it's I like, feel more inclined to say it around somebody's grandma than I do my own friends. Really? <laughs> just to make her feel uncomfortable. <laughs> like. yeah. And it's like, I mean, like, yo. 50 years ago mm-hmm. like or, and that like we t- people tend to take for granted like how far our country and and everybody has come in terms of racism you know it's like right to Actually, us, I don't think it's really been that far, though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, exactly. It's still kind of fresh in fucking a lot of people's right. memories. I mean, that because shit was only like 50, 40 years ago. Like. Exactly. Yeah, it pisses me off when people, especially living in the South, man, when they're like, "Oh, slavery's been in it and all that." And right. It's like, man, no, but it's it's, not, it's, it's so much more than that now. You know what I'm saying? It's so systematic and like the remnants else, of it are still around there. Yeah, you know, like you can't tell me that if me and Germ are born that you can't tell me that I don't have a better chance because my exactly. skin tone definitely is white. Has a better chance, I have a better definitely. chance at anything in Especially life because being my male, skin tone being a white, white male man. as well. Like being a man has something to do with it's, it as it's well. It's the white privilege. And that's shit, part man. of being like a white person, especially at this point in time, is like being able to accept that and admit that and say right. like, yo, I don't agree with that, but that's how it is. It and, makes and me we, sick. We need it. to do things as a people to like, Take, and you know a bunch of white kids saying the n-word is not going to help anything if anything uh, like see. be your fucking self you know like embrace what you are and what you are is not fucking reappropriating a word that right. was a symbol of hatred for right. all right. these well, years well i don't even think know? that we should even be having a debate over whether it's okay for white people to say it or not when we still have like people getting shot by the police every fucking right. day you yeah, know what i'm saying man. there's clearly a, a division here right and just because like it's not the 50s anymore and it's kind of like a cloud division it's still fucking there yeah, it's still there absolutely. Look, 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 i got a real question what's up it's okay when white people say it when they rapping yes. their favorite rappers rap. Yes. I totally we think so. That. I, we ask that. I do it. I agree. I we do ask it. that in the You know what? You yeah, say, I, I agree. If I'm trying to hype you up during a show, I'm not going to sit there and like pull the mic away when you say the word. You know what I'm saying? Like If right. I'm in the moment, I'm going to say it. Like, I noticed, though, that I, like, I think I remember that concert with Kendrick Lamar. <laughs> <laughs> and that white girl that he brought on stage. Man, I, was I watching feel bad rap, for like, Somebody's lyrics the other day on stage, and he's sort of like, 
pulled the mic away right, a little right. bit because it's like it would be weird to have the camera all up in his face and he's fucking man. Man, I truly it. understand that. Right. Yeah, it's that's definitely an awkward respectful. thing, but like I do it just because I'm in the moment. I'm just like screaming his yeah. lyrics. I'm gonna say it. Like I'm not gonna. But if we're like in the van, like he's saying, you know, what I'm saying we're jamming out the key, key for, for some shit, you know, right? And like, yeah. I if mean. you're singing the lyric exactly, like I could be around a, a bunch of black dudes and if we're playing Chief Keef and I'm fucking rapping the lyrics, like that's not. I don't think there's anybody on earth that's gonna mistake that for racism. Not like every other word if you're listening to Keith. You know yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like that's that's useless because I mean, there's a lot of things that are in a lot of the songs I like that I don't necessarily agree with. So I'm not agreeing with those things by saying it. I'm, right. you know, it's it's part of the song. I mean, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you just, yeah, yeah. You just turn it up with it real quick. It's a weird thing being a white because well, it's not a weird thing, but it's like you just kind of have to be a little bit mindful about it because you're a white person making but you know what? music that comes it. from black. Right. Place. I don't. I don't mind it because I totally understand and I respect the fuck out of it. Right. And I see what's going on, and I hate the white privilege shit that's going on. I hate seeing these people talking about. Well, if uh, you know they would act like this or wouldn't be thugs and right. blah blah blah. It's like. They were they were put in a spot to lose to begin with. Exactly from the government, from from everybody, man. It's so systematic. And it's, been, it's been for hundreds of years. Too. Yeah, because people always will try to throw around the statistics and be like, "Look, what percentage of black people are killed by other black people?" Well, number one, people get killed by other people that live in the area that they live. Right. And if you look at black communities all over the world, by and large, or in America especially, like. There's been systematic things that have happened over time where black people got grouped together and pushed into fucking housing right. projects. Absolutely. And it's just the fact that black people have not had enough time over history to get themselves into a better financial position because of the fact that they were fu- they're, like a lot of black people come from fucking slaves in our country. Right. And like they obviously right. like white people have just had a lot more time to make money for Absolutely. themselves and had a lot more opportunities. Oh, yeah. Absolutely, oh, yeah. man. But then on top of that, that uh, you know, we're on top of the, the pyramid. Right. You know? And it all stems from this, too. Exactly. Yeah, man. And it's like, you know, I mean. Poor people kill each other a lot more than rich people. Yeah, you know why? Because they're trying to fucking survive, yeah. man. You that know what I'm saying? give black people an excuse. Totally. Not to, yes. Not to try like No, not at no, all. I, no, but then I, I totally agree. A lot agree. of them totally aren't offered, uh, you know, the. The, the education or the you know yeah, the, the, edu- yeah, the, the chance the to means, better the themselves means to do it is still there I feel it's on you though exactly I agree, like, I, agree. I, mean, I agree as an individual for wait, sure but wait, but wait. I will say one thing before they keep going <laughs> I think it's kind of funny actually like <laughs> like I I'm not disagreeing with anything that they're saying here at all but especially now like the media definitely shines like a fucking light <laughs> on a lot of the stuff going on Definitely manipulates society's whole entire outlook on this. Wait, what if you're what if you're situation? raised no, 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 no. and, and you're bred? I think it's gotten a lot better, but they still like to. Especially now, in 2015, the means is out there. The information is out there. You can go find out how to fucking better yourself. Exactly. As as not as a. But fucking, growing up in the hood, and let's say your dad was a gangbanger and your mom was a hooker or something, or some cliche stereotype hey, hood people. type stuff, you're gonna find out information one day when you're 16 years old and just like all of a sudden be able to transform yourself. No, you're gonna no, be yeah, engulfed no, 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 in that no. lifestyle. No, 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 I agree with you, but I've known people that their their dad was this and their mom was this, and they said I don't want to be that, and they've bettered themselves. But what's the pr- how many of those make it? And exactly, and we and can't. That's the problem. We, we can't no. use those examples of people who did win and who did manage to make the best of it to then look down on all these other people that didn't have no, the no, no, same opportunity. I'm, I'm not you saying know? like fuck all of them. They they didn't do it right. What I'm saying is. They sh- I'm, do- I'm saying this in a positive way. Look at this one individual that can do it. All mm. everybody can do it. Like right. you just got to look past the bullshit and like be like, really, it's just staying strong. And you know, somebody once told me, you know, this, the common saying of it's always it's always darkest before the dawn. You know, what I'm saying like no matter how, like we always said. There was at one point where we wanted to quit doing this shit because we were like, this isn't working. Like fuck this. Let's right. just get our jobs back. But I told him like, look, it's gonna be darkest before it's the dawn. So like whatever the however much it sucks now. And that means it's getting close. That means like our moment's coming up soon. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, so as far as like, let's see, how am I going to really relate this to what I was talking about? Um, so if your dad's a fucking gangbanger and your mom's a drug addict, you know, like struggling through life, I feel like makes you a hungrier person. It makes you want more out of life than the average right. person, especially somebody who's privileged. Sure, who's exactly. with but the, the problem, the problem is though, bl- black people are faced with that more mm-hmm. than we are. Oh, I totally Those agree. Situations. I totally agree. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying that's the problem. Look, I'm not saying get off your ass and get a job. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying. (laughs) No, I know that. I know that. I I think we're saying that's still not an excuse not to do nothing. Exactly. Yeah. Not to be like, you know what? My mom was this. My dad was that. So, I mean, this is what I'm faced with. And this is what I'm going to be. 
The problem lies that like the media. No, he's he's hundred percent right. Yeah. Like, everybody in the world is telling the black community. Fuck like, you Fox ain't News, shit, by the way. Ain't shit, you ain't shit. I just got to say that. Fuck, fuck Fox, Fox News. News. Fox, Fox News. News. Fuck all the media outlets. <laughs> I'm gonna spend a lot of time in airports fuck recently. And yo, fuck, fuck. Dude, Fox. don't let the conservatives hear that. It's so disgusting. Because <laughs> I don't they watch do. TV normally. Dude, I swear, it's Fox News is fucking fear mongering. It's disgusting. Can I give a quick shout out? Yes. Man, come here real quick, Ramirez. Come here, bro. Hop on that. By the way, this is Ramirez, G59 Gods. Five nine. Remember that shit that All we that saw? Hotel room? <laughs> yes. I've never Fox seen News. Well, I kind of have, but not really. In the street, it was about the presidential election, of course, and, and you know, Republican versus Democrat. I'll be throwing all straight. Do you know Bernie Sanders? Do you know Donald Trump? Do you know their policy on this, that? And they literally... Like, it was obvious. They went and picked. They were in, like, Brooklyn or they Harlem. They picked ignorant and people. They picked the most ignorant people that, that would not have a clue about this stuff, right. you know? They didn't go find uh, people that are educated on these topics. Like, no, they did it to, to millions yeah, of them. Thank you. Like there's millions of them at Bernie Sanders conventions and right. at, at at Hillary. It's all propaganda. They're doing it to make it seem like, look, see, the black man is stupid. Exactly. But it was just, yeah, it was disgusting, man. It was so deliberate yeah. and like, like. Making these people look like that, man, and I, it just it disgusts me, and I hate it. I have a. Hey, uh, I thought it was going to be my girl, man. and it said it's Puya. What's up, oh, son? No. Hey, Fat Nick. Hey, yo, we were just talking about great, you guys. So wait, did they just meet him? Because I remember earlier in the podcast they said they didn't meet him. Yet. Like, well, maybe a half hour ago. Shit. See you guys, man. It's popping. Puya. This is the first time I met Puya. Yeah. Oh, that's the first time they met. Yeah. What's up? What up, Nick? Shit. Hey. Hey. Jerm, can we replace you with fucking Puyo? <laughs> Puyo, Puyo, sit down right here so we can talk about how you found them and what you liked about them in the early stages. Because this, we're getting to this end of this interview. We probably got like 15 minutes left. But I want to get Puyo's perspective on what, what he saw. This has been a interview, bro. This has been one of the best interviews I've ever oh, done. This is Thank you. what I like. This is what I needs to be talked about. Exactly. Yeah, we just funny. talked about a bunch of real shit. Before we get on Puyo's tip, um, do you, what do you, how, do you know about like secret societies and all that shit? I mean, I've read a little bit, yeah. Bilderberg Group and all that yeah, shit? Yeah, yeah. I was just curious. Oh, yeah. I've like looked into it a little bit, but all right. Puya, what's good, son? Number one. Number two, how do you uh, find out about these guys? Give us the memories that you have of, of first listening to them. Yeah, these two. Um, Well, the first song I heard it was Clouds as Witnesses. Okay. That's the name of it. That's the one he commented on. I was yeah, about earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just saw it, and then what happened was I just came across it on the internet because somebody retweeted it. Uh-huh. And then... um. I've known about him for a minute. About Jay. They were the last ones I found out about. Uh-huh. But um, the way I came across it was just through the internet. Somebody retweeted it. And then when I heard it, I was like, dope. And then I wanted to find their Twitters. And when I found his Twitter, I realized he was already following me. So I was like, all right, well, so he knows me already. Of course. So then I followed him back. <laughs> right. Because he was already following me. Uh -huh. And I followed him. And then that's it. And then I was just like, you guys are tight. They were talking about how they really appreciated the fact that, like, you know, a lot of bigger artists don't go and fuck with dudes who have less of a following than they're small. Who's the bigger than artist? Well, you're, you're the bigger, artist bigger than them at that time, wow. especially. Come on, man. Hi, Ellie. You look beautiful. That sounds. I'm. I'm not a bigger artist, but <laughs> compared to us, you are, though. man. Well, look at how, how humble he is. These guys are good guys, man. <laughs> yeah. I already. I, I see myself in them too. Really? Even though I heard you guys are older than me. Yeah, I'm this is true. You 26. Old, you guys are old as shit. He's 300, so that's He's way older than you. That Nick on the way was like, yo, guess how old they are. I'm like, 19, 20. Uh -huh. He's like, they're 26, but they're old. We were talking. Does I'm Fat fucking, Nick have an N-word pass? I'm fucking twenty. Are you are you not nah, white enough? In nah, Miami, he does. That's where he said it because he has a pass because he's Spanish. <laughs> yeah, that's what he's saying. Is he Spanish enough? But he's have. Yeah, we've had some deep conversations. We've had some deep conversations about religion, yeah. race. These guys are fucking rednecks, bro. So they can't. <laughs> I'm I'm not, actually, I'm when, I was saying, when I was saying that this is one of the best podcasts I ever did, I forgot that we were doing a podcast for a second there because we were just having like a real-ass conversation about everything, you know? Nah, man. I They've been having pretty good conversations. Yeah, yeah, no, that's no, crazy. Yeah, 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 yeah. You got a fucking moment, yeah. I'll say that. I don't think I've clarified my whole entire like, uh, view on the Suicide Boys in general. Like, there ain't no dumbasses. That's tight. You captured the first time me meeting them. Yeah, man. Rare. Coolest <laughs> podcast in the world. It's like pretty, coolest. Pretty I gotta rare, thank you too because you're, I think, the second most viewed podcast I ever did besides Word? Ian Connor. Yeah, oh, tight. which is good. If yeah. you're gonna be beaten by anybody, it might as well be the king of the youth, right? Yeah. All right, all right, we're back. Who's the king of the youth? That's what Ian Connor got called in that complex article. No comment. Fuck comments. Yeah. No. You comment. might, you might be the king of the youth too. We could all be kings. No comment. <laughs> Shout out to Ian. Yeah. 
So, hey, uh, shout out to you. Shit, how are you doing? I feel like I'm supposed to hit you with some questions. I actually I pretty actually much just hit the end of their questions. Right, right, yeah, yeah. So, like, I just booked it over here. I just tweeted and just met some dude. Where is he at? Oh, he's parking. You got some random dude to give you a ride? Yeah. That's fucking sick. <laughs> <laughs> it was in hey, yo, fucking see, rush hour traffic, I too. see him always talking about Lil Debbie and shit. You know, yeah. I'm like friends with her and shit. I was going to hit her up for you. Man, well, Uber Smurf's driving thing, with her. Smurf's yeah. driving with her. Is he really? Oh man, oh, me. I've been trying to get at her. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yes. I've been, I've been, been using, there. Huh? I've been using the uh, the Fredo and uh, Eddie Baker approach, tagging them and telling everybody to go tell them, "Hey, uh-huh. that's how I got so, popping." You know what I'm saying? When I guess when she hey, does yo, finally <laughs> see me, she's either gonna be like, "That was so cute," or she's gonna be like, "You that little aggravating annoying. motherfucker." Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, if, yeah it, it, she, uh, yeah. Let's not even get into it. She hates me. She hates Eddie. So she hates your, Xavier. Your chances uh, are blown now. Ah, oh, fuck, man. Yeah, it is what it is. I'm not sure. And I've just always had this little thing for her, you know. Well, yeah, everybody, everybody's had a little crush at one point or another, right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is, somebody asked this. This is probably this is the last question I have written down here. Right, is which which one of you guys was uh, saying that you would ask a girl to bleach their asshole before you would lick it? That's him. <laughs> and what? What? This is a strange request. All right. I saw that. All right. Back when <laughs> he just gets right into like, it, like right before, like right before we uh, we formed Suicide Boys, um, we were trying to do stupid videos. Yeah, we were, it was that trial and error yeah, period where we were doing like vlogs and shit. And, oh, okay. uh, actually, don't. And we did a scrimmy to ask one because I'd always fuck around and talk about shit like that. So we were in the tattoo shop, and uh, and I was just basically going over the stipulations. I just on turned the camera on and had him go. What, what, was you know, what it would take for me to eat your ass because I've done it. And uh, this is the, exactly what happened. Um, the girl had her ass bleached before. Uh-huh. Um, on top of that, she was fresh out the shower. I mean, like, no drying off, you know, because I don't want the, like, you know, the staticky, rubby, dry cheeks, you know what I'm saying? My okay. face is going to be in there. You dig what I'm saying? <laughs> See, I would just accept that. I wouldn't complain about well, the staticky. Like a, <laughs> man, <laughs> dude, believe, when they're fresh yeah, out of the shower and they do it right, it, <laughs> it, it, it tastes like fucking Well, that's skin. what You need a glass of water. And it was it was my ex who was a black. He was a black girl. A black girl. I think you were going to say a black girl. She was a black girl. Back to what we were talking about earlier. <laughs> we just had this open mind. It was, <laughs> it was my ex. No, oh, geez, y'all made me. Y'all made me feel like no, I was in Bob. No, we, right. we know we, we are from the yeah. south. Yeah. All right, all right. Um, it was my ex who I had been with for like it was like seven year relationship off and on, uh-huh. and we just did this shit one night, man. So you know she had a fat ass and everything, and then she does have a fat once, ass. Once I got that first taste, you know what I'm saying? I was in there, son, Addicted. like a porno. You know what I'm saying? Like fucking face in there, smothered, like. <sighs> Get on top of me, shit like that. Fuck that bitch, though. She enjoyed it. She, she enjoyed did. it. She well, did. I asked her after. I'm like, did you, did you like it? Because I didn't even, I didn't even go near the pink. I just stayed up top. <laughs> I've been eating ass since. I know that conversation was awkward as hell. It's like the fifth grade. Oh, and no. she was like, yeah, it was. Tight. Are you serious? <laughs> well, since I was like 15, I was did like, you say modifying the Bobby Schmurda like lyric it? right there. But no, I think I like licked a girl, a girl's butt when I was in like fi- when I was 15. How was that? How was it? Fucking amazing. I've she was never, so hot. It was I've the coolest thing ever. I've really? Licked the butt, no. Oh my! How, barely, how can you be a rapper these days and not lick a butthole? I barely licked a pussy to be honest with you. Really? Yeah, I got. Like, yeah, I'm not a big fan of pussy eating, man. What? Look, look, if I like you, bitch, like... Is this sus? Am I the only one who thinks this is sus? No, 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 no. I just think it's... It's a young game. You know, when it comes to sex with me, like, like, if I put it in and I bust it up within, like, 30 seconds, I mean, that's fucking awesome. I'm not trying to be fucking you for, like, no five minutes But don't you... Five minutes is a long time? Uh, Yeah, yeah, fuck yeah. I mean, if... I I don't know about that. But if you like this person, don't you want to, like, spend a lot of time doing something fun with them? No, look, if I like the girl, I'll eat her out, but, like... I'm not talking about, like, a Thai prostitute at the Motel 6. <laughs> I'm definitely eating around if it's a Thai prostitute the most. Really? Yeah, just for, no, I'm just fucking yeah. up. <laughs> eating out hookers is like that's a, the most hardcore thing you could do. If it's Gross. my girl, I'll eat her I'll out. Eat her you out. know what I'm saying? It's like some random bitch. We'll go a little though. longer and shit like that. But if it's like some one night stand, unless type she wants shit, to, unless she wants to 69, then I'm about it. It used to be super uncool to eat pussy and rap. I remember 69 is lo- not even that I tight, fucking, bro. I lo- no, no, no. 69 is weird. Shit. I- be the same height as <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. All right, I'm not yeah. even I'm not even focused on the sensation of her lips on my dick because 
I'm so focused on what's going on. I know, but here, that means you know she's so saying? focused. No, dude, it's perfect. I love 69. It's not perfect because I don't really feel anything. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> to I me, think 69 is some relationship shit. When you spend <laughs> enough time <laughs> around it. Always talking about sex. Yes, yeah, so you guys went into super depth about sex on yours. It was yeah, awesome. I, watched that I mean, bro, I you admit it. You're a sex addict. My girlfriend addict. at the time was here. She wasn't my girlfriend. She wasn't your girlfriend at the time. That's probably the biggest thing that's changed with you since uh, the last podcast, and now you have a girlfriend. Yeah. How's that going? It's, it's good, man. <laughs> <laughs> Nick might too. I don't know. Nick got a boo boo too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Her name's her name's I wish you guys could see her smiling. Name is Chanel. I love my girlfriend. She's cool, man. She's she loyal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Loyal. Good for you. That's all that matters. Loyal. So yeah, the, the bleach, the anus thing. Yeah, I mean that was that was one of the stipulations, but. I mean, people think I'm just like this big, like, cereal ass eater. You know what I'm saying? Cereal. <laughs> where, <laughs> where I, like, go around and just fucking bend bitches over, open them cheeks, and just I don't think he's eating ass. Yeah, video. yeah bro. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, fuck. I've, I, you want me to, I've done it once with my ex. You know what I'm saying? And then, like, I. So, Scrum's a cereal ass eater. <laughs> started to turn into, like, oh, Scrum's Learned just like new. cereal ass eater. Fucking ass eating monster. You know what I'm yeah. Amazing. Yo, we're about to hit the limit. The card's almost full. Word. We got to do the, the shout outs, the goodbyes, and stuff. Shout out. Okay. Uh, goodbye. <laughs> like, hey, uh, who do you want to say shout, shout out, out to? Uh, shout? shout out Blackout. Shout out Stunner. Shout out uh, uh, Navi. Shout out uh, Six Fo. Shout out Tenchi. Uh, shout out the fucking Bohemian Club. These people are still the around. Group, uh, the fucking Council on Foreign Affairs. Uh, 9-11 was an inside job. <laughs> no pun intended. Shout out to all the Christians that we offended with this podcast. Suck a dick. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Shout out. Shout out to the Masons. Shout out uh, Puya. Yeah, shout the fuck out, Puya. Shout out Black Smurf. Shout Pufay out Buffet Boys. Boys. Shout, shout out, out Jay Green. Jerm. Jay Green. Ramirez. Ramirez. Ghost. Ghost. Fuck you, man, Ghost. Ghost. The fuck you, man. Oh, oh shit. Hey. <laughs> they got everybody there. <laughs> hey, shout out. Hey, shout out the best. Shout out the best up and coming producer in the underground, Slim Gucci. And shout Watch out, out uh, Don Krez for dropping some knowledge on yeah. me earlier. And shout out Lil Gage with Shout the out Krez. They got <laughs> knowledge from Krez. That's funny to us. <laughs> <laughs> Krez don't have anything good to Krez, say in your nah, opinion? Nah, I mean, he, was, he must have been fucked up, huh? No, nah, 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 nah. we just got some Subway together and he schooled the fuck out of hey, me. Bro. Bro. What's Krez get a Subway? Uh, he got the them, uh, usually he gets the tuna, but he got the meatball. You got schooled by Krez, you retarded. <laughs> I got schooled by Krez. It was all about business shit. All I don't business know, man. Shit. I felt pretty good. Yo, we had Jeremy. We got a show tomorrow. Yeah, oh, they yes. do, not we. Yeah, oh, no, you do too. Y'all too. You do too, motherfucker. That, and Seattle and Portland. Yes. Tomorrow will be the first time yep. we play Southside Suicide live together. So I you was guys thinking about that. I dream about together. that all the time. Me too. Dude, me too. Every time we play your shit, after I, we, we yeah. do ours, we play your verse. That's yeah. what I'm saying. What we're going to do, bro, what we should do is like your last song should definitely be that song. And then I'll come out to that song, right? You think? Yes. Well, we're going to see if y'all want to do whatever y'all want to do. Yeah, but the first thing I should come out to is that verse. Okay. Agreed. See, you guys have played some lit shows, but the Puya shows are probably going to be like craziest shows you ever played, I'm oh, guessing, man. right? I mean, uh, we've been yeah. doing like three, four hundred. Yeah. So probably, and we sold out, you know, every venue except, I think, like two. They've been we killing it, bro. They've been killing yeah, it. I, it's su surprising you know shit because out they of got us, a, bro. They got a cult like following. You that's do too. Why. Your shit is crazy. That's yeah, why. Yeah. That's when I saw them, when I heard them, I already knew. I was going through Puya shit after we did the interview, I just li you. liking tweets that had Puya in them, just so that they would look at my profile and see the interview. And it was like. That shit works. Mind blowing. You know what's shit sad works. though? Shit the works, sad bro. thing is that our mixtape together has the most views, just because like, oh, well, Puya's on it. Let's see it, and that's a sad thing because their new mixtapes are way better than all the shit I did with them. But you did the one with them like four months ago or something, yeah. right? But that shit sucks compared to their new you shit. Think? I, I appreciate know, it. I appreciate it, but yeah. the one we did with you is hard as fuck. Yeah, so bro. your new shit is fire. Man. Thank you. They I just did like that like one. every fucking day, bro. I can't even get a song that's out like, so in so a so year. You know? It's crazy. So shout All out right. to the fucking Suicide Just boys. hungry, Shout bro. out to your Buffet Boys. All right, I got to end this, but yo, thank you so Is much you guys right? for doing this interview. It's fucking bro, awesome. Thank you, Thank Adam. you, man. To all the people out there, no jumper. Check us out on SoundCloud, YouTube, iTunes, the coolest podcast wow. in the world. Twitter at nojumper.com. We did an interview with fucking Puya and Fat Nick that was lit as fuck. We interviewed Ian Connor, Gangsta Boo, uh, motherfucking Black Cray. Oh, that's the best one. Which one? Oh, Antoine Dixon, Antoine Eddie Dixon. Baker. Shout out to Eddie Baker. Eddie Baker, shout out Eddie. Top five, dead or alive. Shout out Chili Sosa. Shout yeah, out yeah, Chili yeah. Sosa. Fat boy, yeah. fat boy, Eddie Baker. What's up? <laughs> yeah. All right, thank you very much, guys. I appreciate Thanks, it. All right, man. And that is the No Jumper Podcast. Stay on the lookout for Dark Side of the Clouds is what we got up next.